special show going on y'all today we got brandon croucher jeff the real mccoy i'm sorry i just had to pause for a second just mm. Mm. yo it's going down y'all hold up let me get this banner for y'all so y'all know what's going on so they, ain't it. they don't say it they just say our name Okay, all right, all right. That's that's that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. Well, wait a second. Like Cutting up with y'all like that. Serious business. Serious business. <laughs> serious business. Serious business. All right. Let's get serious. What's going on, gentlemen? Yes. Hey, like I said, if I, if I was any better, I'd be twins. That's my thing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I got some crusty oh, man. Man. I got something I'm steaming from you both already before we even started the show. If I was any better, I'd be twins. And they only made a couple perfect, God only made a couple perfect heads, and the rest of you he gave hair to. I'll take Come you on both now. Of the <laughs> Hey, it well, in is that such case, I'm pleasure. glad my head ain't perfect. <laughs> Don't try to keep it off. Oh, man. I tried. By, hey. by 16, it was gone, and I'm like, all right, just give in. Grow a beard. Hopefully, that will look good. <laughs> man, I wanted dreadlocks so bad, but then, you know, I, so did gave, I. Up, you know, I, I gave it up at the tender age of 16 when I started losing my, my hairline. I was just like. See, we are related. <laughs> when I, when yeah. I was a kid, I used to imagine that, that, that my hair was out the window, my hair was blowing in the wind. I ain't had no hair. That was <laughs> <take my job. laughs> I'm glad we're I'm glad we're having a mental health conversation. And Jeff's over here like, oh, I remember driving. I was on my bike. My hair was blowing in the wind. Fabio used to call me for tips. I get it, Jeff. You're handsome, okay? <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Yo, we getting right into it. So on this special episode, we're talking about my brother Brandon. He came to me and, and he had a, a great idea, a great idea. Well, in my, my opinion, it was a great idea. In our opinion, it was a great idea, clearly, because we're going to talk about it. So I'm going to let him do the pitch. But also, after he told me the idea, I was like, oh, I got to holler at Jeff about this. I got to holler at Jeff, the real McCoy, about this, because I know that if I bring him into the conversation also, there's going to be some synergistic flow. You know what I mean? So I'm already calling that. You already already know what it is. You know, so we're going to have some fun here. But Brandon, I'm going to turn it over to you. You let us know what we're talking about today, man. Thank you, Pastor. Um, so today, <laughs> sorry, that's a joke between that's a joke between us. Sorry, guys. So I was sitting down and my background is I'm a former youth pastor. So I'm very into the religious side of things. And I've always been interested on many different sides, from Buddhism to Jewish to just everything that you can ask. Like, why does the church separate? And why are there so many different religions? And what God's the right God? And then it hit me, sit down and go look at the Ten Commandments. And so I did. And I started going through and I wrote all ten down. And then I felt the energy of the, or the universe just say, nope, there's more. Go into the Quran, go into Buddhism teachings, start looking all of these up and look at the main principles of them all. So I started going through them. And as a person with bipolar disorder, I know the ups and downs of mental health challenges. And as a person from the church, I know that it, without going into a debate of church and separation and all these things, I know that the church has a lot of times where we feel judged in those buildings. So for me, I was sitting there and I just... I haven't been to church in a while and my mental health is something I take really seriously from diet, exercise to meditation. It all goes through those. And when I sat down and I looked at all these things, I wrote all these commandments and one by one, I tore them apart until I saw where it came back to us and went and looked at us. And so today we're going to go through the 10 commandments and we're going to do the mental health 
Ten Commandments. And let's have some fun, guys. So commandment number one, if no matter what Bible, no matter what religion you are, they tell you not to have any other gods before you. So for me, being a human being, being an individual just like Jeff, just like the real McCoy, and just like preacher Mr. Ha Mr. Harry over here, okay, with all the baldness. The thing is, when it says no other God, have no other gods before me, it should mean something to us. Meaning, don't put anybody else before yourself. Don't put anything before yourself. That means work. That means a significant other. And it doesn't mean being mean about it. It just means know your boundaries. So, don't have any other gods before me. How many of us have? got a significant other and we maybe have a kid together and then the kid becomes the priority that kid becomes your god or maybe you bought a house that's out of reach and all of a sudden the house becomes your god because you have to be able to keep this house whatever it may be are you putting something ahead of god which is you and not being able to bless yourself the way we're supposed to so commandment number one have no other gods before me do not put anyone before yourself talk gentlemen you got let's devour this one and then we'll move into number two. The real McCoy. <laughs> well, when I think about that, I think instantly, I think immediately about the I amness of who I am, knowing that 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 God or the universe, as some others may call it, has placed a part of itself within us to mm -hmm. individualize us and personalize us and understanding that the uh, the that that me myself represents this physical being, this present, but the I amness of who I am is divine, and therefore we should have no other God before that divinity which God has placed within us. I love that. Goes right along with it. All right, Harry, Matt. I see why you and Jeff get along. Woo. <laughs> well, no, I'm still writing that down. The I amness. Let's speak a little bit more about the that I amness. Why I finish this and put this down oh. at that banner. Down at that band. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna jump in here, but speak a little <laughs> bit more on that I am this. Well, I one of y'all. <laughs> well, the, the the thing is in understanding that I am this and understanding that you know a lot of times we get caught up in our uh, religion and uh, um, and we don't really know the separation of that religion from the spirituality of it all. And religion is just a process and the, the act or the actions of how we go about worshiping whatever uh, we are seeing as our own divine source. However, the spirituality of it is the quality of your conscious awareness of the human spirit or that divine spirit placed within you that gives life that animates the me myself, if you will. And uh, when you have that quality of awareness and of, and of the consciousness of it all, and how it is unified with the bigger picture of the grand mind, the, the universal mind, if you will, the all that is, as some refer to the presence, the universe, God, uni being one and verse referring to the multiplicity of it all brought together into one place. So when you start looking at the conscious awareness of that, that quality of consciousness and awareness of that human spirit and its direct connection to the divinity of all that is, then you understand there's a distinct difference between being spiritual and then practicing your religion. A hundred percent. I would even go a step into that and say, when you say I am anything, you're st you're taking a commandment almost. Get out of here, cat! You're taking a commandment and you're manifesting it. I am gonna go to. Barbados, I am going to make a difference in this world. I am. You're making that statement and you're making it from that inner core of the universe. If you believe it strong enough, it'll come true and you can manifest it. So for, I, I love how Jeff phrased that. That was perfect. It was, if you're going to say an I am, when you hear yourself say it, know that you better be speaking truth. You better be speaking from your stomach. You better be straight from the heart. Well, see, the problem is a lot of times we get caught up in ourselves and, and looking at you know, when I see, when I say, hey, look, you know, uh, looking at the me or myself, I did something myself. 
that mm -hmm. myself is referring to this physical existence that everybody else relates to and calls you Jeff or Brandon or Harry or whatever. But when you start looking at the 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 I am, this representing uh, it on a different plane, that spiritual plane that 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 actually comes from a different place, a different level of consciousness that has a, a divine ability to reach out in a spiritual way and touch things yes, that are not necessarily physically present, but actually pulling it into our reality to the degree, as we say, you know, in, in the Bible says, when we start capturing those things and digesting them in our spirit, then the word becomes flesh. Yes. So actually, let me play with you on that. All right. You ready? Mm -hmm. So yes, what's sir. the second commandment in, in the Bible? Uh, brother, <laughs> uh, you're good. Don't make any other gods before me. So don't yeah. like make a false idol and all that. That's literally the second commandment that I wrote. Don't make a God. And so what you're saying is a hundred percent along those same lines is don't put something there. Like, have you ever been guys? I know you're going to say yes to this. Cause I've been there. You ever just been madly in love with someone. And then later when you're out of that relationship, you realize like, wow, that was really toxic. How many times do we get pulled into something because something of beauty, something of money, something of power comes along and it deters us and makes a God for us without us even realizing it. That's the important things of life is knowing to keep those boundaries for yourself. Yes, sir. I will say, A, what y'all said was amazing. I ain't no... Whew. Like it's done. All I'm doing is just, just coming behind, just, you know, scooping up the few crumbs that y'all done left for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whatever. I just, I just want to say I love what, the way y'all flowed and that I am this. When we talk about it, you know, put no other thing before the I am this that you are. Mm -hmm. Understand mm -hmm. that you are not the subjective I. You're not the small I the eye that has the experience, the eye that, that is having this, this human experience or e even having this human emotion or moment. You are the eye behind that. That eye behind that is the creator. You plug mm -hmm. into the matrix via the lower eye. And so when you make a, a statement of I am, you being the greater eye are choosing an experience for yourself. And that's mm -hmm. why your words must be in the affirmative. That's why you must state those things that you truly desire in the affirmative and not look at what it is that you don't want. Because when you sit, sit around and somebody asks you what it is that you want and, then, and you are you at all these don't wants, you see, every single time you say you don't want a thing, you have to stare at that thing in order to see it. Just like don't think of an elephant. You see, you have to see that elephant because a creator doesn't create a not thing. It only creates things in the affirmative or in the positive, in the, in the positive. So to stay within your flow, you have to speak in the affirmative, which is why so many different treatment modalities, be it science, science based, life coaching, whatever. They all have affirmations involved in the, the process of transformation because people don't know how to speak uh, to life. They don't know how to speak that life out of them. They only speak at mm. the void. They only look at the void. And so they speak from that place. And everything that you look at, you mm. begin to bind yourself with. The, the ego begins to attach itself with because whatever we stare at eventually becomes our reality because that's all we see. Perception is reality. And so if all I see is what I see, then all I know is what I know. And if I know that all I have is what I don't want, then what I'm going to experience is lower frequencies of sadness, depression, anger, resentment, so on and so forth. But you see, we always have a choice because we're not the subjective human experience. We're the I behind the I am. That's I'm with y'all. We didn't get the chance to hit the button there. No, no, no that was my button. I just. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that. I, so I, I think that it. goes along with actually perfectly. Like your words, you're choosing. Think about what you just said, Harry. It's if you keep yourself at that lower vibration, usually you're speaking negatively and not even realizing it. You're in a vibration of like, oh, well, that doesn't happen. My favorite is I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. The sports motto here is, oh, only in Cleveland. And if you saw the game two weeks ago with the Jets, we lost in astronomical fashion and it made international news because of how embarrassing it was. When you start saying only in, or you start saying, well, I'm not good enough for that. I can't do that. Guess what? You're putting that limit on I am. And you're not realizing that's what you're doing. Surround yourself with people that I'm going to beat you. Surround yourself with people that 
are not putting themselves in an I am that brings them down, which goes to commandment number three. Commandment number three from the Bible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, whoa. you missed number two when you were off the screen. <laughs> Jeff and I went, uh, Jeff, Jeff, oh, did we already you. talk about don't make a God? Did yeah. we already talk about don't make a God, Jeff? Okay. Yep. All right. It, Howard, pay, pay, come on, pay attention, Pastor. Keep right. up with us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, brother. I'm just kidding. But it fits perfectly with the way this goes because the next commandment that is in the Bible and everything is don't use the Lord's name in vain. How I took this. Because the Bible says don't use the Lord's name in vain. The Buddhist says don't hurt yourself or use your name in negative ways. Where the Quran says don't put, don't use the name of the Lord thy God in any derogatory fashion, blah, 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 doesn't say derogatory, and in a negative fashion. How about don't put yourself down? Don't mm. put yourself in a situation where you're sitting there and the words you're choosing because of the people you're around are bringing you down. Meaning, don't use your name in a negative way. When you say, I can't, I'm not going to be able to, I, I've never done that, I don't know how to, you're putting yourself in a downward motion. Don't say, I don't know how. Say, how? How can I do this? And then go. Don't put yourself in a situation to bring yourself down and make your name lower than what it should be. I quiet now. <laughs> Yeah, he said it. I mean, really, you got to keep your um, the, the way that you are speaking. Like I said, the words are spirit in their life or they can be spirit in, in death, depending upon where you are, are are attaching your your thoughts and your speaking to. As I will speak to my boys, it's like those words come out and they in as spirit form and then they come back to us and come into our ear gate and they dwell around in our thoughts until we come into eventually come into agreement with them. And then they flow down into our being and into our spirit and that's when they become flesh and start manifesting in our outside circumstances and conditions so you can't put yourself down if you don't want it to show up in your life as a part of who you are this right here use the lord's name in vain don't put yourself down all right I, it should be don't use the Lord's name in vain. I was yeah. writing fast. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Like, oh. don't, I don't oh. want everybody being out here going, God damn it, everywhere they go. I don't need that. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that situation. <laughs> I just oh. want them to love themselves, okay? Don't <laughs> use. The, look, and I'm just like I'm just like the, you know, Ron Burgundy. Whatever you put up there, that's what I'm reading. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> whatever you I'm, put up there. I was writing quick and trying not to be not to be distractive. I was trying to pay attention and make sure I put all 10 in the comments for you. My fault, my fault. I'm you're writing good. them now. I'll be quiet. You're good. You're good. Don't use the Lord's name in vain. Don't put yourself down. I'm so glad again, we got that. <laughs> wait, what happened? I said, I'm glad we got that. We found that. that, that oh, era. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. That was good. Yeah, we needed to correct that one. Um, but again, perception is reality. If you think yourself a beggar, then you are a beggar. If you think yourself royalty, then you're royalty. How do you know which choice you've made? Intentionality reflects relationship. Whatever you are intentional about is what you've deemed to be true for you, because I'm not going to respond to it unless it's real for me. So intentionality reflects relationships. So the more intentional you are about responding to your dreams, the more energy you pour into it, because wherever awareness goes, energy flows and everything consists of energy. And so just as a matter of time before it collapses from the quantum field into this physical space. But understand that when you take your name in vain, when you begin to down yourself, then essentially you are choosing to experience that form of I amness. This small eye of lower frequencies. And so it's a matter of making a different choice and then intentionally responding to that choice. So if I am great, then what does great look like? Like, what is that? How does that manifest? Because it's thought, word, deed. When you combine thought, word, and deed, that's how you manifest whatever it is that you're trying to manifest. The longer that you combine those things, you are in maximum frequency. You are in flow when you combine those three elements, thought, word, and deed. So what is it that you are being intentional about? Because intentionality reflects relationship, but also inten intentionality is the mother that gives birth to transformational change. What are you being intentional about by combining those three elements? And the heavens open. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's, so please, please. That, that was my little, you know, my little piece on that. But please, what's we going to the next one? Anybody got anything else on that? Man, you can take the offer on that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Oh, my God. I'm like, are we doing like a tithing offer right now, Pastor? Like, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time of the podcast. Please understand the commercials are coming in, but we are having our tithing offerings coming around. The Lord will be with us today. Please don't. Sorry. All right. So. Number four. Because we did number three, don't lose your name. Don't let, don't break, use say mean things about yourself. Number four, honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy is what the Bible says. The Quran says to remember who you are and have a day for you. The B Buddhist way is saying, remember to look inward. So for me, it's remembering that no matter how busy you get, if you don't take time for yourself, you're never going to get anywhere. You're just going to be on a treadmill of life. You have to take a day to let go of everything and sit down, look inward and love yourself to a point that no one else can love you because no one else is going to give a shit about you. And that's the truth in this world. Love you first. That was my next one. Number four. Yes. Harry? Sorry, I swear in so much. I'm bad. Hey. Uh, no, no. Hey, brother, you're speaking uh, uh, passionately, you see, in the 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 fervent effectual prayer of a righteous man availed much so please bring all of your your fervor bring it all here brother we 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 welcome that here at the school of outliers man where we keep it lit living your truth brother go ahead i just think that it's a thing like we're only at number four but the thing is like like ref i'm gonna tell you okay like ref, i'm just that's what you're gonna be from now on i liked it way too much <laughs> my thing is Harry, like when you and I text, how many times do you and I write each other like, sorry, brother, I was busy. I'll get back to you in a few. OK, we do it all the time. But the thing is, how many times that's you and I and you and I have our own energy. Jeff and I are already best friends. We go way back. You didn't know this. OK, but I the thing is, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> mm. But the thing is, I look at this and I say to myself, how many times, how many different people do you have of Brandon's in your life that you're text messaging and saying, Hey, I just want to catch up. And then how many of those people do you actually respond to that actually say that to you? And then how often do you take the time to say it to yourself? Like when's the last time you looked in a mirror straight in your own eyes and said, Hey, I deserve better. I love me. I want to take care of who I am and get the best of me. What does that mean? And a lot of us don't do that because the minute we get in the car, we turn on our radio, we turn on our Spotify, we have the TV playing when we get home. There's always other noise. The only way you truly are able to get to yourself is silence. And I say that as someone who, A, is a talker, and B, is someone who, I'm a huge extrovert. I, I, I go out and I can take over rooms with ease. I'm sure nobody could guess that by my personality so far. But my thing is, I had to break away from all the people and learn what that meant to love myself. And as someone with the illnesses they deemed me with, that doesn't mean I'm broken. It just means I'm hurting part of myself by letting them put that in me. And by getting alone, I was able to see those aren't, tr those aren't pains. Those aren't things that are keeping me down. These are the things that are used to build me up and help build others up around me. And so for me, you have to get alone. Be in the silence and get mad at yourself. So you could break through because all those negative words are the words of demons along your way. Break away from those demons. Set yourself free by giving yourself time to love yourself. All right, I'll shut up. You guys take over. For me. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's, you know, he said a mouthful that I, I, I agree with you entirely. You know, and and I'm sure in all of the different religions they have some form of uh, of loving yourself and. And you do have to get in, in silence sometimes. And I, I know from my Christian background, you know, uh, a lot of them don't understand, you know, uh, meditation is in the Bible, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it specifically says to to meditate with your own heart in your bed. And I mean, it literally it, it really says it says to talk to yourself. I mean, if you're not talking to God and you're telling directly and you're talking directly to your own heart, that's meditation. You and and you have to take time, and then there's then there's the time where it says to to be still, 
and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, and, and, and be still, part of being still is shutting up and just getting quiet and hearing what is dropping into your spirit that's going to actually move you forward because no matter where we are or, 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 or what background belief we are coming from, there is a understanding that love is the foundation of it all and that it is guiding us to our higher good and our best good. So the only way that you can hear that instruction, we spend so much time just asking, asking, help me out, or, or help me out, God, help me out, universe, you know, figure this out for me, I got a problem, asking questions, asking, 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 and never take the time to shut up and hear. And that's the only way you're going to get the insight that is intended for you because as you know as they tell us from my background he speaks in a still small voice so how you gonna hear a still small voice if your mouth is flap flap flapping and talking loud 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 all the time you gotta shut up you gotta be quiet you gotta just listen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. harry i got a question are you do you have anything to add to that or can i go, jump in no hold on let me add on let me add on here now let me add on uh, y'all just needed to make That's sure I, the I, I am i am I just need to get this off my chest. No, I'm not gonna get it off my chest because I just forgot what it was. Jeff, you said something. <laughs> I'm so what sorry. What was the last thing you said? What was the last, last thing you said, Jeff? <laughs> you got it off your chest for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, um, what what I was saying is that you got to, uh, you know, stand still and see the salvation. There we go. Like you got to get quiet. You got to get silent. You got go. uh, to take some time to hear instead of asking, begging, pleading, and, and looking at all of the things that we see with our natural eyes and not being able to see with our divine eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to be able to shut those things off. And one of the keys to that is when you can stay happy and content in spite of everything around you looking contrary to what you desire, but when you can continue to maintain that joy and happiness in spite of what you see naturally, you are showing your trust to God or to the universe that he will work it out on your behalf and that you trust him to do so. And in that situation, all you have to do is stand still and see the salvation and hear in your silence when you shut up and just wait for the answers to come. Mm -hmm. The waiting. So why don't we wait, you know, or why aren't we patient? When you don't look at the colloquial understanding of anything, go get your own understanding with beginner's mind. And so when you look at the definition of patience, it is to have the capacity or the reservoir to hold discomfort or pain with for an extended period of time without becoming dismayed. Now, why mm -hmm. would you hold pain for an extended period of time and not be dismayed? I mean, if I'm experiencing pain, I'm gonna feel some type of way when you understand that that pain has a purpose. So what is the purpose that you're looking at when you're going through the pain? Your purpose is that vision that you have in your heart because it's not about what you do see because faith is not belief in what you do see but acceptance of the unseen. You gotta accept that you operate under universal laws and that this world is ever changing. The one thing, the one constant in this world is change. Change is mm -hmm. inevitable but growth is optional. So we gotta choose wisely and update ourselves. Mm -hmm. We gotta update ourselves.